708, we're live. <laughs> a little subdued. We're live. <laughs> Today we're talking about, uh, so good evening, everybody. Today we're talking about um, not this camshaft. <laughs> this is an LS camshaft. I was using this for the video that I filmed today, which hopefully will be out tomorrow morning on turbo cams. I'm very excited about that. Um, <laughs> that's going to stir some stuff up. That'll be awesome. But this tonight we're going to talk about small block forward cams. So the question is, uh, if you take a camshaft and here's the problem that one guy runs it in one combination, Oh, that thing only made 300 horsepower. Another guy runs it in another one. Oh, I made 400 horsepower. How did the same cam do this, do different things? <laughs> was it the tune? Was it the, the not installed right? You know, there's all sorts of things to think about when you're talking about here. Um, and, and really what got me thinking on this is when I did the video today, or uh, now that I'm editing the video today that I did on turbo cams for the LS, it got me thinking that a lot of people seem to think that a camshaft works like with one specific combination, that there's one ideal camshaft that works if you have a combination of certain things, there's this one ideal camshaft that makes more power everywhere than everything else. That's just utter nonsense. That's not a real thing. <laughs> the camshaft doesn't respond better to a particular, well, there isn't one ideal camshaft for any combination. I know that people want to, to sell you otherwise, but in, in any kind of camshaft, there's for any combination, there's going to be trade-offs. There has to be. There can't not be. There never has in any of the testing that I've done. So that still begs the question, though. How does one camshaft make more power on one combination than the other? Well, and the answer is very easy, that the, that the combinations are different. So I'm going to give you two specific examples of combinations that I ran. And this will help illustrate how people can get different results. And then, you know, the word gets out there <laughs> in internet land that, oh, that camshaft's not very good. It didn't make any power. Well, yeah, it didn't make any power because you were trying to run it on the stock motor and it didn't do anything. You didn't have all the other things. And it's not, and this is why I want to go to the next level of stuff. It's not that it didn't have the specific things that that cam wants because there isn't that. What it needed was more stuff. <laughs> so we'll take a look. So uh, the, uh, we're going to talk about the Ford Extreme Energy Cam that I always use. But this could be this could be the Summit Cams. It could be the the Alphabet Cams. It could be a cam from anybody else. It could be you know the, the stuff from Iski or anybody. It doesn't matter. So we'll take a camshaft. This is what I would call middle of the road performance cam for a five liter deal. The this particular cam was mid five hundred lift, five fifty five, five sixty five. Um, 224, 232, and a 112. So you, you could certainly make a better camshaft that makes more power than that on a, on a small block forward. Not a problem at all. That's why I use this example because it, it works fairly well on lots of stuff. And so what I did was er, way back for Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards, I think I originally did this test for, we had a rebuilt 302. It had a flat top piston with valve reliefs so that we could run... Um, and, th and this one, I think, only had valve reliefs for the inline valve heads, not for the twisted wedge stuff. We were we were going to be running inline valve heads on it, so it wasn't a problem. But that the it had forged pistons, probably probe pistons back then. It had forged rod. It had a stock block, stock crank. And then we started off, I wanted to run this thing all stock. So we started off with the stock camshaft. We started off with the stock E7TE heads that had springs in them because we would be running different camshaft in it. And then we had, um, at the time, we had GT40 upper and lower intake manifold, the tubular, <coughs> excuse me, the tubular one. We may have started off that originally with the HO manifold, because I kind of wanted to see what the GT40 was worth. And then we had the uh, long tube headers, I think, at the time, which we had installed in place of the factory exhaust manifolds or shorty headers. Because I, what I was doing was one thing step by step and see which each thing is worth. But even in that, even though I'm fairly diligent about you know, testing one component at a time, the reality is the order that you test them in has a big effect on what the results are going to be. And we'll be able to see that when we see the different power results from these things. Because if I, if you, for instance, if you're running this test and I had stock heads on, I put the cam in first and then we've replaced the, and then we change the heads, the heads show a big power gain. If I were to put the heads on first and then do the camshaft, the camshaft would show a much bigger power gain. It's not because that camshaft works better with those heads 
it does, but it doesn't like that specific intake to exhaust flow relationship or the fact that it's aluminum. It just likes it. The rest of the motor is there and it was only missing. It was only lacking in the camshaft area. And now you've applied that just like with our LS stuff. It has a good intake. It has good cylinder heads. It has enough displacement. It has enough compression. When it has such a mild camshaft in it, when you put the camshaft in, you look like here and you get big gains, but only because it has all the other stuff. On a five liter Ford, it doesn't have a good intake manifold and it doesn't have good cylinder heads. So just putting a camshaft in, you don't get to look like a hero. You get to look better, but you're not a hero. I mean, there's no hero status there. So in this combination, we ran the, we had headers on it. We had a GT40 intake and we had um, the sock camshaft in it. And then we put the, the extreme energy camshaft in it and that picked power up to 311 horsepower and 349 foot-pounds of torque. So right off the bat, what does that tell us about the camshaft? We're making more torque than horsepower. What does that tell? It doesn't just tell us something about the camshaft, although people probably would point to the camshaft and say, well, that, that must be a really mild cam because we're making more torque than horsepower. Remember, that's a really good indicator on whether your combination is mild or not, or that there's something else that needs to be changed. If you have a combination that makes more torque than horsepower, I always use the tune port stuff as an example, but a five liter Ford is basically Ford's version of the tune port. When you have something that makes a lot more torque than horsepower, something is going on. If you have something that makes a lot more horsepower than torque, now you're getting a lot more racy. But in our case, we're making more torque than horsepower. That means we have a mild combination. In this case, it doesn't mean that we have a mild camshaft because later on we have another kind of camshaft where this camshaft makes over 400 horsepower. So the camshaft has the potential to do that. It just needs other things to support it, just like what the LS did. So in the case of the five liter, in the case of running this camshaft on this mild five liter, it had two strikes going against it. One, the GT40 intake, not terrible, certainly better than the factory HO intake manifold, but still not great. Definitely a long runner, a little bit better than the factory stuff. In fact, about 15 to 18 horsepower on this test uh, on an otherwise stock motor. So it did make more power and lost some low speed power compared to the factory one, which we have come to expect um, with the stock cam. <laughs> so it had, and it also has terrible head flow. It has very restrictive stock heads. Those E7TE heads, the factory cast iron heads on the five liter Mustang, not great by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it would be cool to test a set of uh, Vizard ported heads of the stock ones, because I know that he's worked wonders with them. And I've never tested a really good set of ported heads that, that have shown like, I'd like to test them versus a stock set to see what the gain is, what the potential is from, from some properly ported ones and compare that to some of the 30 or so aftermarket heads that I've tested on five liters. But so we had um, restrictive heads and we had a restrictive intake manifold. So when we did this camshaft, I think that the camshaft was worth about I don't know. Uh, let's see. 25 or 30 horsepower. It went, went from 278 to 311 when we did the camshaft change. And it picked up power from 3000 on up and would have picked up power below that had we loaded it down low. So 311, 278, 22. Yeah, 30, over 30 horsepower. So it picked up decent power. But was what was really stopping the thing from making power, like I said, if we would have had ported heads first and then we would put the cam in, the cam would have showed much bigger gains. Uh, and also it can be, I think it could be argued that on the five liter Ford, the factory five liter Ford cam, actually pretty good size. It's something that helped them make decent power with this thing. And <laughs> we know that uh, if you believe some of the results where the somebody was able to make um, 400 horsepower from a 302 with the factory camshaft. I still don't believe it, but I want to duplicate it and see if it's, see if it's real. And that's, but that's another test for another day, but that, but at any rate, that camshaft works pretty well. So, but that's, that's number one combination. That's the mild combination. That's the 300 horsepower combination. So that cam is only a 300 horsepower cam or a 311 horsepower cam. Fast forward to another combination that I put together. And this one was a stockish short block, although with enough piston to valve clearance for this camshaft, but it had the two other things that were missing on this. It had really good cylinder heads. In fact, are arguably some of the best for, a, for this level five liter Ford. And it had an, more than enough intake. Again, arguably the right kind of intake for this combination. 
So this one had a, it actually had a slightly dish piston, um, but with valve release in it. But it had this comp, this 274 camshaft in it. It also had a set of trick flow 11R heads on it. So small chamber, lots of flow, good valve angle. And they're very, very good heads. <laughs> and it also had a dual plane uh, air gap style intake manifold. This was a speed master dual plane uh, an eliminator or something or something like that. And I think that this only had a 650 uh, carburetor on it. And then this combination with long tube headers on it with that camshaft made 419 horsepower, 390 foot pounds of torque. So quite a bit better. In fact, more than 100 horsepower better. N not surprising given the fact that we had a much better induction system and much better cylinder heads, but with the same camshaft. So then we run this thing and it makes for nearly 420 horsepower. Is this a 420 horsepower cam or this is this a 311 horsepower camshaft? Well, yeah, the answer is it's both of those. Uh, and it depends on what combination you're running in. And obviously there's a big range in between there where we've run this camshaft on lots of stuff that made, you know, 350 or 370 or 380 or, you know, all of the ranges in between there, depending on what else you paired it with. But a lot of people are quick to judge uh, the results of, you know, they they generalize about this thing. Oh, well, that camshaft only does this. I have a camshaft that's a lot better. So I could have showed them the results of these two and go like, well, which one of these do you like? Which one of these cams do you like? Well, I like that one a lot better. Well, they're the same cam. <laughs> so it's, it's not a cam problem. <laughs> the cam is fine. The cam has enough power to make. In fact, if we were to put, you know, we could go up in compression, <coughs> put a single plane intake manifold on this and make even more power with this camshaft. Um, we're, we're getting near a point where I think I probably would run more camshaft, especially if I was thinking about doing a, a single plane intake, just because a single plane intake is going to want to make power at a higher engine speed. So if we were going to do that, I think I'd run more duration. Also, if I wanted to make more power, I think on this camshaft, I probably would tighten the LSA up. I think that that would be a better choice. So there are things that you could do with this kind of cam to make a lot more power. But this one obviously does that. So on a stockish motor, it's 300 horsepower cam on a modified motor. It's a 400 horsepower cam. It's, it's all of the above, um, depending on what you pair it with. And we see the same kind of thing with a lot of stuff, you know, uh, the Dodge Ram is, or the, yeah, the 360 and 318, the Magnum motors in the, in the Dodge Rams. That's another good example. And, and the tune port stuff and, and the small block Chevy is another good example. They're, they're not terribly receptive to camshafts. And even though people will tell you that there are specific camshafts that work with those kind of induction systems, having tested lots and lots of camshafts on tune ports and lots and lots of camshafts on factory five liter forward induction systems, the same thing is going to be true of the kegger manifold on the Dodge. It's just limiting, not and not limiting in terms of airflow, because if we improve the airflow, that can help. But it's always going to want to make power in that RPM range. And we've seen that with all the tune port stuff because of the reflected wave. <laughs> it wants to make power in the 5,000-ish RPM range. And let's face it, if you're going to make power at 5,000 RPM, if you're going to make peak horsepower at 5,000 RPM, torque is always going to be higher than horsepower. It has to be. Because if you don't make, make peak power <laughs> past where the crossover is between horsepower and torque, the torque is going to win that every time. And that's the thing. And, and almost no matter what you do with camshaft, unless you can push peak power out past that, you can't make a whole bunch more peak power. You have to do it with a different kind of induction system in the case of the tune port. And it's the same thing on the Dodge Ram. I like that we did the modifications on the Dodge Ram with the UT Awesome guys. They sent out their big throttle body, which is very cool because it was 3D printed. So I thought, oh, this, this thing is kind of awesome. And then we did the, um, they sent out one of the manifolds with a kegger mod and that did good. It made, it made good power. But ultimately, just like doing these ported versions of the tune port stuff, even though we can go to great lengths to, to make those modifications, what we see is if you want to make lots more power, uh, certainly horsepower, if you want lots of like off idle torque, <laughs> long runner manifolds work great. But if you all if you want to make more power, and especially if you want to push power up in the 6,000 RPM range, 
a dual plane manifold is always going to make more power. And we see that also on the Dodge. Um, and I'll be running a, a dual plane intake manifold on that stuff um, before too long here. And we'll be running different camshafts with it. And what we'll see is people will say that, oh yeah, that, that camshaft likes the dual plane. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it just likes not being limited in RPM range. <laughs> and now that it can breathe, especially if we put better heads on it, then it would be go, hey, look, I have all the things that I need, just like this little 302. I have all the things that I need now to make extra power. So now I can spread my wings and fly. And, and that's what happens with these things. And so uh, I'm, we're going to do a poll here. And this can't, this poll is going to be different than what we were just talking about here, but it's, um, it's related. Hey, okay, is there a specific cam profile that works best with poor flowing heads? So is there a magic cam profile that will really wake up those bad, those, those weak flowing cylinder heads? Let me know in the comments. Let me know, let me know, and let me know. So one liter mafia is in the house. I see you. Timing fuel, cylinder heads, boost. <laughs> that's the way to make it better. That That's one thing that Julius is in the house. Um, that's one way to make the E7TE heads is just add about 10 pounds of boost. Actually, add seven pounds of boost. <laughs> Cams are just multipliers of the, ex <laughs> the existing rest of the combination. There you go. Twin HX35, five liter or 351 would be awesome. Yeah, that would be good. I think I was going to do that with twin 35s. I probably would put that on 351. Allen's in the house. GTS Allen. Russell, the HX35s have, oh, they have internal wastegates. Yeah, we talked about that the other night with the limited flow. And I would imagine on diesel stuff, that might be more of a thing since they don't run lots of engine speed. <clears throat> yeah, Turbo, keep us up on, keep us updated on the, um, your cam situation. Have you used the rocket anti-lag like the Subaru? Would be worth installing two on my twin turbo four and small block. Do you have um, uh, boost response issues with that? <laughs> Z303, the world. <laughs> Got a 303 fan. Blue collar, didn't somebody recommend a, a cam fixer upper place for you? What's the highest lift you've been able to run on a late 80s five liter? Well, this cam that I'm talking about is 565 lift. Five forty four is not the maximum. Five liter in the Capri is 11.3, E303, 195 Renegades, TFSR, 75 throttle body. Cool. What's everyone's opinion on micro square? It works good. It will give you the air feel that you want. It will give you the, the timing that you want. I just put E7Ts off my 302 on my 351 van to replace a cracked head. I didn't have time or the budget to put proper heads on it. I may sell it complete to install a 5.3 or a 6.0. You couldn't go to the wrecking yard and get some GT40s? Just put a 5.13 lift in it. Got scared here thinking about it. A 5.13 lift in your 5 liter Ford? The lift isn't, if you're worried about piston to valve clearance, the lift isn't what does that. It, that's duration.
Yeah, we need we need duration. <clears throat> That's going to be the next poll that who has, who else, who has a side hustle? I don't know where Dan has been. Dan's been MIA for a long time. Easiest way to make 400 horsepower in a forge is to put an LS in it. Wow. Jealous much? Green's not a good color on you. Uh, Frey of no DZ302 says no matter how big the cam is it will never make weak heads great <laughs> make weak heads great again all right uh, Danny is Dan is in the Livermore area I think With spark plugs, is there a point where the temp and the gap of the plug restrict horsepower? Or is it a matter of produce spark and don't blow it out and you're good? Yeah, you just, if you're running boost on it, just run low gap, like in the teens, like 18 or 19, and you won't blow the spark out and it will ignite the air fuel and it, it will work. But you should, if you're running boost, run a colder plug. Shit, the camshaft is like a multiplier, a multiplayer of the equation. Next test, next test on small but forward, would like to see the AFR enforcer heads look to be the best of the ASCAS heads. I don't know if I have anything to compare it to. Um, I have a set of AFRs, and I think that they're the enforcers. Um, I'm using them to test piston to valve clearance, I think. And I'm going to be doing a video on that. So we can run those. I think that the heads that are on there right now are the blueprint heads. I picked an NOS crane five liter hydraulic Corolla cam this winter, almost identical to the 274, other than the lobe separation is two degrees wider than the comp cam. That's actually the cam that I ran in my Mustang. I ran the crane version for years. And I think it was a uh, 542, 562 lift too. It's a little bit diff different. Uh, blue collar. Scrolling back to see what your question was. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> there are stock five liters in the low elevens. Richard, I mean, I missed it. What are the specs on the 400 horsepower cam? It's the Extreme Energy 274 cam. And it's also a 300 horsepower cam. Richard, have you done any tests with an MSD ignition box versus no ignition box? Uh, an ignition amplifier you're talking about? Um, an ignition amplifier will help power if you are you have insufficient um, spark energy and you're getting misfire. Then it will help. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything.
Uh, Sebastian, the, the putting a small carburetor on there to get good fuel mileage really isn't a thing. It, it, that, that doesn't work. I'm installing some rec, PRC rec port heads on my C6 LS2, 233, 250 cam. How much power do you think I'm going to make? Doing the full cam kit. What, um... What intake are you putting on there? Richard, is there a way to inject nitromethane into your engine like nitrous? I already know you would have to run the timing for the nitromethane all the time, which should be the hardest thing. You can run the motor or try to run the motor on nitromethane if you want, <clears throat> but it would be problematic. You have to have enough spark energy to make it work. I wasn't sure if I'd need the anti leg because I'm mounting twin 76 T4 turbos under the bed of my Chevy. It's about 25 feet of pipe. It's 25 feet from the from the header back to where you're mounting the turbo. That seems like a lot. Uh, E7 T he had stock or 165 CFM. The nitromethane is not going to play very well if you're running gas also. It, it may be better if you're running on alcohol to begin with. Uh, would it be able to, possible for you to acquire a new LS cam gear drive set? Does somebody make a gear drive for the LS? If you grab a V10, would you consider selling it to me to ship it to Australia when you're finished with it? I don't know that you would want it. It's not. We're not going to do a bunch of stuff with it. I'm just going to run it and put turbos on it. If a cam change comes with more duration, but the same lift and LSA, does it still make a difference? Yes, it would make a big difference. Changing the duration is going to change the RPM range where the thing makes power. And also it might change the, the total amount of power that it makes. I don't think I've ever tested the Flowtech heads. Yeah, burns. That's probably a better question. Uh, there are 600 wheel horsepower K24s on nitromethane alone. No, there are there are 600 horsepower, uh, and I've never seen a 600 horsepower one. I've seen 400 wheel horsepower ones that are um, dedicated 10,000 RPM racing stroker motors, but not a stock K24. How much of a spec difference between a factory cam and an RV cam in a 454 Vortec? You mean the the Gen 6 one? Uh, is there a website that has cam cards for any cam? Not that I know of. Oh, Jewish, you just want a V10? I'm installing the PTR carbon intake, 105 millimeter throttle blade. Cool. Uh, 
have a 91 five liter. Should I change the cam or get better heads? The problem with the five liter is it needs heads, cam, and intake. Uh, all of those will help independently, but together they help a lot more. Uh, GM Ellis gear drive. You you just want to hear it? I don't I don't think I would do it for just noise. And it's a thousand dollars. Yeah, no, that's a hard pass on that. I know every cam is a turbo cam, but will 13 degrees of overlap work on the street? 351 Windsor AFR Enforcer Head eBay GT45. It, it that sounds like what what is it what, what are the <laughs> easy there? What are the duration specs on that? My guess is it's probably not the cam that I would pick for that combination. I would pick something smaller than that. But yeah, I've run cams with um, the cams I ran on the turbo stuff varied from negative uh, thirty seven to plus twenty five degrees of overlap, and all of them ran with all of them ran with a turbo, so it will work. But the the camshaft that has 13 degrees of overlap, how does it perform like in, in, in a NA condition? That's going to tell you a lot about what it's going to do with the turbo because whatever it does NA, it just gets multiplied under boost. So if it's soft down low, which maybe it is, if it's soft down low, it's going to be soft down low with the turbo. It's not going to spool very well. Not because it's not a turbo cam, because the cam is soft down low anyway, even NA. Are the new Flowtech thumper heads with the weird exhaust part of those totally new design or copying something? I don't know. I haven't seen those. Just want to get my hands on a V10 and a good late model 460 for future projects. Uh, have you tested a 351 with GT40 heads and a cam? I don't think on the engine dyno, but I think that the, um, weren't the original uh, lightnings, didn't they have that combination? Uh, a 302 has a different firing order than the 351 and a 280 than the 289, right? There are two two forward firing orders. One is 1372-6548. Um, that's the five liter. And that's what the 351 is, right? And what's the other one? Uh, Non-HOs are 15426378. Non-HOs. Where do you buy LS1 or LS2 or 3? 660 Springs. The BTR, I mean, almost everybody has those, right? Have you ever fly cut any of the E6 flat top one year only forged five liter pistons? The one that are on the 86s? If you put different heads on it <clears throat> and you have a flat top piston, you're going to have good compression, but you are limited in how much um, camshaft you can run. But you can run more than stock, especially if, you, if the heads that you swapped on there were twisted wedge heads, <coughs> but I, I've never notched that particular piston, but it can be done. I mean, Nisky makes a cutting tool for that. Uh, my bad, the hot side is 12-ish feet. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> Is 
I've seen the 600 horsepower NA K24s also. What stall converter? Do you have an do you have an automatic transit on your five liter? I don't know, twenty five to twenty eight hundred, depending on which cam you pick. Yeah, Jewish, let let me know what the NA one does. I don't know that it takes 600 wheel horsepower in a in those race Hondas to to run nines. But I'll go check them out. How about a 238 244 at 50? Um, that's not going to be torquey and stay under 6,000 RPM on a 347 <laughs> unless you've severely restricted that camshaft with some kind of intake manifold that's forcing you to do that. A big carb and heads, um, that's a really big camshaft. Did the five liter Mustang have aluminum heads? Not from the factory. Would have been nice if they did. Tommy DeMuse is concerned about harmonics and the knock sensor. Uh, I applaud you trying, thinking that you need to try nitromethane in a five liter Mustang. Um, <laughs> the amount of power that you're going to get is going to be nowhere near what you would get with a turbo or something. But, you know, like I said, I, I applaud the effort. Twin Precision 76 millimeters. Those are good turbos. <clears throat> Five sixty-five, sixty-five, two twenty-seven, two thirty-five. Center lines. What's the LSA on that? And then what are you doing with that three fifty-one, Mike? Stuart, if you're good at porting and you can improve them, then that's a good thing to do because you're, I don't know what your time is worth. You have to decide that. You can make them better. They're, in my opinion, they're not going to be a trick flow head or an airflow research head even after they're ported. So those will be better, but those are going to cost money too. Um, Sebastian, you can, why couldn't you run 87 octane at part throttle? There's no load on the motor at part throttle. You're not going to detonate the motor. As long as the timing is realistic, that's not, that's not hard to do.
Yeah, the firing order on these motors just isn't something you should worry about. You can put in whatever camshaft you want. You just hook the distributor up correctly. Are the Dart Iron Eagle 165 heads big enough for a small buck for 400 horsepower? I don't know what they flow, but they got to flow better than a stock one. What's the best aluminum head? It depends on what you're doing. I mean, I have three or four videos up on aluminum head tests that I've done on five liters, and you can kind of see what they all do. Uh, does AFR make a head for the small block Ford, uh, small block Mopar rather? I don't think that they do. Mike, it's 109. Okay. Yeah, that's not the cam that I would select for what you're doing, but as an NA1, it will work, and then you can add boost to it. I would pick a much milder camshaft, um, one that's probably going to idle better than that, although at 227, that's not going to be terrible, even with a 109. Shadow Ops, the L6 springs will work on 862 head. Um, the Truck Norse cam is fine. And they also make an NSR version of that that you can use the stock 862 springs. Although I don't recommend it only because it's so cheap to put um, LS6 springs on or LS3. They're all the same, LY6. Um, it's so cheap to put those on there. And you not only would you be using the low lift springs on the 706 and 862 heads, but you'd be using well-worn, high-mileage used ones normally, and it might not be a bad idea to replace those. We need seven enforcer heads for my 5-liter 190 intake valves and a can that's 224-230. Blood piston to valve clearance with a factory pistons that has valve release. The, the factory pistons have valve release, but not for that size valve. Um, you have to measure it and see. I don't think you will with a 224 cam, but I have yet to measure that on the AFR heads yet. I went small in the cam, 511 lift, 212, 218, a stock bottom end 302 with 165 heads, 70 millimeter throttle body, 80 millimeter mass error, explorer intake. Okay. That probably drives pretty well then. Richard, are you going to put out new videos on the, on the small block Fords? I don't know what you mean. On which ones? Jonathan, 224, 237, 107 LSA plus 5 on a small block Mopar, which heads flow 240, 8.5 to 1, static, 7.5 to 1, dynamic. So that's the camshaft you want to put on a what size Mopar is this and what kind of power are you trying to make and all that? Is a twin throttle body intake manifold a good option for an LS2? Are you talking about the cross ram stuff? The fact that it's two throttle bodies isn't the thing that makes the intake manifold do well or not do well. The one thing you do have to worry about on a twin throttle body deal is how do you get both the throttle bodies um, working in unison? That, that sometimes can be a problem. Uh, I, I usually recommend trunnion upgrades on really high mileage stuff only because your rockers more than likely have lots and lots of miles on them. Uh, AFR does have Hemi heads. That's right. Um, Shadow Ops, for that Truck Norris cam, all you need are those um, cheap factory 550 lift springs.
<clears throat> Sebastian, if you're not running any load, it doesn't matter that there's a supercharger there because you're not making any boost. And you can run 87 octane in it. Forget about the throttle angle. What you're talking about is load and you're talking about detonation. It needs to be tuned. So under the conditions that you're talking about, you don't get detonation. That's the key. Uh, new videos on the 302 and 351 to clarify. I, I'm sure I will put up more videos on the 302 and 351, but none of that has anything to do with what we're talking about tonight. Uh, Jonathan, that's enough camshaft, I think, to make 400 horsepower if you have good heads. And did you tell me what the heads were? Uh, Jason, I, I can't tell you about piston to valve clearance because I haven't measured your combination. Looking, but I can't find flow rates for the 165 heads. I'm, I'm thinking that they were 260 or something, 270. Richard, 351 Windsor, Howard's hydraulic roller cam, 224, 230, 110, okay for street. Yes, that will be fine. That's like this camshaft that we're talking about tonight. Lots of guys run without hardened push rods, but um, that's one of the things I like to do is put push rods in it. Larry, in 92, when I first bought my 86 Fed, I bought a Summit EFI cam, Hypertech chip, Flowmaster mufflers, SLP runners. The car went 1411.97 when it was stock, with the mods went 1444. That's. that's not very good, not very good upgrades. Uh. Yeah, Jonathan, 240 is enough to make 400 horsepower. And I think that that's probably enough cam, even with limited compression. If you run a 282 and a stock bottom in Windsor, I on a on a 351, I'm sure I'm certain that I have not. Best additive you've seen produced on the dyno or post teardown. I I have never. Or if you're talking, are you talking about an additive that adds power or an additive that changes? Well, if it's if it's a frictional change, we we should see that with power. But I haven't seen anything that works yet. How's our poll doing? 57% are saying no. Is there a specific cam profile that works best with poor flowing heads? Do you think a stock stamp steel rockers will be okay? 219, 227, LA318. Maggie, I'm hoping to get 350 horsepower. <clears throat> 9.8 to 1. Does it still have the stock heads on it? The, the rockers will probably be fine as long as they stay in place. <laughs> the best additive is two turbos and nitrous. Uh, Terry, you're changing the thicker the, to a thinner head gasket? Where is the piston at? How much piston to head clearance do you have? And you should go to Wallace Racing. You could plug in all that information because I don't know the rest of your information. I don't know what you're starting with. I don't know what the position of everything is. 
but here are my concerns. Uh, 26 thousandths is really, really close for piston to head clearance. If the piston is at zero deck, if it's down in the hole, then you don't have to worry about that that much. You don't have to worry about piston to head clearance. Um, so where is that at? And I, I, what was the original thickness of the head gasket? AFR enforcer head and the 274 cam. And what, what intake would you put on there? Because the intake would make a big, would change things a lot. The motor, tough part is the motor. We all done at 5,000 RPM due to the tune port intake manifold. Don't, don't like driving faster than that through a stern drive. Been looking for a website I can put in my engine specs and kind of get a roundabout horsepower rating. I don't think you'd get that from Wallace Racing. You'd be better off to get it here if you told us what the specs are of the engine. We, I could give you a pretty good idea. Chances are I've tested something that's going to be close. A six liter LS, does more lift determine whether you need a converter? No, not at all. <clears throat> the duration does and lobe separation angle and overlap. Uh, Sebastian, that's wishful thinking that all the parts that you pick, that you could know where the peak power, the peak torque was on each one of them. That's not going to happen. Ty 72 probably overboard going two of everything out of single oil tank and running coolant lines back to the engine system works perfectly. And let's face it, rear mount work truck. <laughs> Turbo system will be heavy. You'd like to see the enforcer heads with an intake showdown on 351 Windsor. What, do you want EFI intake manifolds tested on that and carbureted ones? Uh, a heavily ported stock 364 barrel manifold. Does that... <coughs> Does that manifold work well? I don't, I've never run a comparison on the 360 manifold versus, uh, I take that back. I have, I haven't run the stock 360 manifold, I think, in comparison to the Edelbrock RPM air gap, I think, on my LA motor. So I think that you're, um, I mean, porting out the stock one is going to help it versus a stock one. I just don't know how that's going to compare to something that's good. I'm going to add a Scog and Dickey Ellis barbell. Are you, are you doing a billet one or whatever? Because there's, there, there's literally hundreds and thousands, millions of LS motors out there running with stock plastic ones, but the billet one is awesome. Um, 250 CFM from a stock E7 TE head and the exhaust only flowed 115. Was the exhaust not ported or something? Big bang on the four, six, five, four and six, eight. Uh, Richard, they're aluminum originally. None of the LS barbells are aluminum. N none of the, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them that I've taken them apart from the wrecking yard, they've all been plastic. Uh, 
360 manifold stock flows about the same as a standard RPM air gap. I don't, I don't look at airflow in the intake manifold to determine power because that's not the thing that determines power <clears throat> in intake manifolds. I've, I have lots of intake manifolds that flow the same or even flow less, but make lots more power. So does the, have you seen a test where that stock manifold is run versus like an RPM or an RPM air gap? And, and did it make the same power as the RPM air gap? Yeah, if yours is aluminum, it's been upgraded already. 250 CFM seems like a lot. Yeah, that's that, that's adding nearly 100 CFM from porting. And 100 as a percentage of 160 is a pretty high percentage gain. Like the C3V test with cam control. I would too. That will never happen on the dyno though. I haven't split one of the 302 blocks on the engine dyno, um, but we did split one when I was doing stuff with the guys from HP Performance at the track. Lots of torque. I'm building this for race week and a weekend Hundigan truck. Uh, you can get 270 CFM out of an E7. <laughs> Someone was lifting the head on the flow bench. I like that. I didn't think about that. I, I just thought it was a pressurized flow bench. <laughs> MSD ignition, RPM window switch to control of EVT. But the the VVT is not on or off. It's isn't it pulse width modulated? I think it is. Too much nitrous will split a 302. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Like I said, I said I, I told you guys I would like to run uh, something that David did because he I know that he's done a lot. <laughs> more gear, more more Motec. <laughs> I, the the last thing that I would be interested in is having a ECU that would allow me to run a three valve motor that I'm sorry for the three valve guys, but almost nobody cares about. And I liked it. I thought it was a big upgrade from the, it was as much or more of an upgrade from the PI motor. The three valve was compared to the upgrade from the PI to the non PI stuff. It was a big upgrade and it made as much as the four valve Cobra stuff did. It's just a pain to try to run. 39 head gasket, piston down the hole, 25 thousandths, 351 stock piston. I know you've done the big block forward building and testing, but I would have loved to see a test on the multi-part fuel injection with just a throttle body cam and injector upgrade on boost. So you just, oh, you want to run a cammed otherwise stock 460? with boost. So you're going to have a motor that I, I'll, I'll bet that that fuel injected 460 probably makes low 300s the way that we test it. And then with a cam, it's going to be, I don't know, 360 or something like that. And then under boost, it's, it's going to be a multiple of 360. I, I can't port like data advisor, not, not, not even close if that, if that comment was to me. I, I even tried to set a ported three valve heads and they didn't really show very much. But like I said, we weren't running the VBT, which we should have been. We did try manually adjusting it, manually retarding the cam by one tooth. 
and that did change the power, but not enough to make it worth it. I look at the sock four barrel intake is just as good as an Edelbrock performer, the standard one, no RPM and no air gap yet. I have run boost on the three valve stuff and I made an intake for them. Um, we've run a blower on them. We've run nitrous on them. We've run a turbo on them. Variable length intake runners do can change stuff. Admiral's in the house. So we're going to get rid of our pole at 51% saying no. A little bit split, 51.49 there. That's good. And we have our two our official two-minute warning. Because <clears throat> I'm going to go look at the 600-wheel horsepower uh, nitromethane. Because I know the guys from Skunk pretty well. And um, I was talking to them about their drag race stuff. Because all, all of the guys were experimenting with nitromethane. Because you run into a you know, a specific output thing you run into and they're running lots of RPM and they're trying to make the motor bigger. <clears throat> and then you're trying to run <laughs> fuel that will add power. Uh, Sarah, uh, the camshaft that I would recommend for a stock converter on a six liter would be something like the truck Norris cam. You know, 383 airflow heads. Uh, I don't know what air gap single plane intake manifold is. The air gap is the designation given to the dual plane. And a single plane intake is all of them are air gap, basically. I've never seen one that's solid. They always have airflow throughing. So I don't know which in intake manifold you have. And are you asking how much power this thing will make? Six point eight three valve with custom short runner intake and cams would be cool. Yeah, because that one doesn't have variable cam timing. That would be better. There's your video that maybe decided on the Truck Norse cam over the Torque cam. The Truck Norse cam is really good. That that style camshaft works really well. It's a good combination, a good balance of horsepower and torque. Three hundred two roller, two thirty four, two thirty eight. That's a good size cam and a small block Ford. Cheap 160, 160 alloy heads, four speed car. Cool. I grew up where Stan Weiss and David Visor shop. I didn't know that those two guys were linked. Um, I don't know Stan. I've never met Stan, but I know David. A air gap single plane. So again, I've never heard that designation given to it, but which single plane is it? Is it a Victor Jr.? Is it a Super Victor? Is it a Victor? That truck Norris around 550 cam. What's going to 600? We'll have piston valve clearance. The lift is not going to change piston to valve clearance. The duration is what changes that. By the time you're at maximum lift, the piston is already way down in the hole, so that's not an issue. <clears throat> My bad on the E7 quote, the visor head flowed 228. That's different. <laughs> That's still a lot. That's still a huge gain over 160-ish. Um, but 
270, would, that's, those are big numbers. That's like airflow 185 kind of numbers. Okay, because I was thinking we'd get some top end performance by increasing the lift on the same duration specs. If anything, you might gain power everywhere, but lift isn't lift isn't related to RPM. Lift can be related to RPM, <laughs> but not in the range of camshaft that you're talking about. My 3V always ran good. It was trapped at 114 NA. That is running good. I was thinking small look Chevy numbers. He gets 260 from a double hump. That also seems like a lot, although it's starting with a whole bunch more than the Ford. I mean, it's it's 40 or 50 up on the Ford to begin with. Sarah, welcome. Yes, come bring friends. If you could bring eight or 10 million of your friends to watch, to watch the channel, that would be fantastic. Then we could really do some damage. I could really get some testing done. One more minute. <laughs> 10 minutes ago. See, I just want to hang out. So what do we look at at the end here? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Ninety-six went up to the high and then ended at the high. Today was a good day trading. It was a good day. What turbo should I go to to make around five hundred horsepower, four point three liter? Mm, a GT thirty-five eighty-two. Internal combustion guru, there's lots of people here who are sharp, and that's why they all help. Uh, I did um, Oh, I did uh, record the video, so I'm editing it now on the the turbo cams. And so that will be good. <laughs> I'll make sure to, to post it in the boosted Facebook group and <laughs> let those people go crazy. Have you watched any of the Catalog Garage's YouTube channel? I haven't. <clears throat> Andrew, you need to ask your question differently. But unfortunately, I don't have time to answer it because it is time to go. Thank you guys all for showing up, but I'll be back in the morning. Bam, 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 bam